Here in the South, we know a thing or two about summer heat. So when it comes to outdoor projects, you need equipment that's fast, durable, and easy to use. At SunSouth, that's exactly what you get with quality John Deere equipment ready to tackle any project that comes your way. And owning a John Deere is easy with 0% financing available on most models. So you'll beat the heat and you'll save money. To find the John Deere that's right for you, come see us at SunSouth. Equipment for those that do. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Expires June 30, 2022. WQE 99.1 FM Noonan, WBRQ LaGrange, WZV 90.5 FM Lionville, JC Sports Networks. This is for the busted hearts. This is for the question marks. This is for the Hello, friend, and welcome to the Bible with Bob. So glad to be with you again. Get to study the Word of God. We are in the book of Revelation. We are now in chapter 5. Uh, last week, we got a really good look through John's eyes of the throne of God and the 24 elders and four beasts or creatures that surround the throne and a really good look at the presence of God. Talked a little bit about the rainbow and the promise and the colors that emulate from the throne. This time we're going to dial in on what's going on. John wasn't just told to come up here so he could see the beauty and splendor and power and glory of the throne. He was brought there for a reason. The things that he's going to tell us from here forward are things that affect, I believe, you and I. That generation that will live to see these things. Things are happening so fast in this world right now, whether you, 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 know, you may be one of those people that says, Bob, I don't watch the news. I, I just don't have time to watch the news. Well, that's okay. You don't have to. It's going to happen whether you watch it or not, right? Also, you know, worldly events, they're going to happen whether you pay attention to them or not. But I got to tell you, the, the numbers of Internet Voices, the numbers of YouTube prophets and everything have exploded. Even the traditional rapture teachers have gotten in on the game now. We have so many voices crying out with the same exact message that we have to be a Berean and we have to study them and we have to discern what the devil's inserting and distracting us with or not distracting us with. And we can't discount the word of God because he said, listen, if they don't worship me, the rocks will cry out in their place. What do you want me to do? That triumphal entry was the triumphal entry. This is a different kind of entry. John has been brought into the presence. Jesus came into our existence. Now John's being taken to the presence of the throne to see what God is going to do. So Revelation is warming up now. It's getting busy. So today, or this time, we're going to talk about and read through chapter 5, or we're going to try to get through the entirety of chapter 5. You know, I get a little long-winded, and I appreciate your grace. <laughs> um, let's pray. Let's get the Holy Spirit involved, and then I'll give you my email address. Father, in the name of Jesus, glory to your name. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come and fall before you. We pray for your power, Holy Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. Lord, we don't know how to properly read and take your word. We just ask you to teach us. Right now, Lord, we ask for distractions to be taken away. We ask for focus and guidance. And we ask for you, Lord, to protect our families, our children, our spouses, our loved ones, Father, our friends that we know and that person that you've put on our heart to witness to. We bring it all to your feet. We ask you now, Holy Spirit, to come and inhabit our fellowship as we sit down to study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, listen, before we get started, I want to again encourage you, Break out your word of God. Break out your copy of it. And if you don't have one, please reach out to me. Bob, okay? Bob, that's me. Reach out to me. I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you. Reach out to me. Here's my email address. 
Bible with Bob, B I B L E W I T H B O B, at gmail.com. I will send you a Bible. There's something special, like I said last time, about having the Word in your hand. You can have it on your phone or your iPad or your tablet or whatever it is, your computer. You know, you can do that. That's true. You can also very easily flip over and check your Facebook. You can very easily get a tweet. Or like happens to me as I'm recording here, I'll see a a text drop down from the top from one of my kids reminding me of something or I've got a bolt in my tire, Dad, or something like that. (laughs) Or my wife saying dinner's ready. So um, rather than having that distraction, having the Word of God in front of you is a really good thing. And I like to have it. I have my copy of it here and... We're going to get into chapter 5 right now. So this is the New King James, as is my custom. I'm going to to, uh, proceed to read chapter 5, the book of Revelation, verse 1. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Now you hang on to that. We're going to really get into that. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, listen to this and remember our last time together. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Remember? The root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Hmm, seven seals, what do you know? And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came back and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousands times ten thousand and thousands and thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, the strength and honor and glory and blessing, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all of All that are in them I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. All right. If you are a... um, movie buff or uh, you like to read good no- good uh, mystery novels um, this is getting to it as we like to say <laughs> it's time to get busy I told you the word of God was going to pick up and here we go all right so we're going to take it verse by verse as is our custom we're going to break it down if we don't get through chapter five this time we'll pick it up next time all right so we've got a little time let's do it all right, so I saw on the right hand of him who sat on sits on the throne. All right, so we've established that this is God. This is Yahweh. This is the Father. Jesus said, I don't speak anything of my own. I only speak what I heard from my Father. This is the source of everything. Life, words, power, everything, everything. This is the place when in, the, uh, the, in, in Job, when the angels had to report, the sons of, sons of God had to report, and and Lucifer, they have to go stand in front of the throne. This is it. This is where it's at. Okay, it's the center of everything. This is it. He sat at the one who sits on the throne in his right hand. All right, I'm just paraphrasing here. Was a scroll. 
written inside and out on the back and sealed with seven seals. Let's talk about that for a second. All right. What is this scroll? There are many teachers who teach that this is the names of those who are saved. Wrong. It's in the book of life. Well, this is the this is the, the scroll of their deeds or their works. Wrong. It's the book of works. One book's going to be present at the Bema seat. One book's going to be opened first at the Great White Throne Judgment. Both books will be there, but guess what? Only one's going to be at the one where we get judged at the Bema seat by Christ. Our name will be found in the Lamb's Book of Life, or we won't be standing there getting judged by Christ and being given a reward. Our works will be taken and measured out, right? But at the Great White Throne, the Book of Life will be opened and their name will not be there. And then the Book of Works will be opened and we'll see what evil they did. That's at the end of the millennial reign. We're going to get there. This is, this is all going to come together for you and me in the next few chapters. So just hang tight. But here's why I'm bringing this up. Friend, this is the scroll. This is the title deed to this earth. Let me say that again. I, I, I already can hear the twitching and popping starting of some people saying, what is he talking? Blasphemy. Oh, goodness. Come on. This is the scroll, the, the, the title deed to this earth. Who has the title deed to this earth? Who? Satan? A lot of us believe that Satan was given you know, control of the earth. No, he was allowed to come here. And when we talk, when we go into Genesis, when we're done with Revelation, I'm going to teach you exactly where we are geographically. Okay? But Adam had dominion. How do I know? Because that's what the scripture says. Adam had dominion. Adam gave dominion over. Satan had no dominion. He had nothing until Adam gave it away. But this earth belongs to Yahweh. This is God's. This is him opening the scroll and reading out the title, the deed. Who owns it? And the only person who can... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Jewish tradition and rules in here, okay, quickly. The only person who could open a seal in the ancient world, and even today... Is the person who has the ring whose signet matches the wax seal. And in Jewish law, a seal was inside the, the scroll and outside the scroll. So these seals aren't seven little seals on the, the open edge of paper. There's the first one, and then the second one's inside, and you got to break it loose and break it loose. And each one of these sections is one more part that God has taken back. You're going to see what I'm talking about here. As we progress into Revelation, you're going to understand this better. So if it's hurting your head, just take a vacation for a second. I just want to make sure you understand that this scroll is very important, okay? And it's got writing on the back and the front, and it's got the seven seals, all right? And no one in heaven or anyone can even look at it. Why? Because it's a royal decree. Got that? A royal decree. Who's worthy to read a royal decree? Only the royal. Or his designee. Correct? Well, nobody's worthy. Who's worthy? Wait. There is somebody who's worthy. But John's weeping. He says, I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. No one. But there's the elder. He reads, reaches down and he touches John. He says, hey, don't weep. Behold. Now remember when we did chapter 4, we talked about that. When I read to you out of Isaiah. He's saying the exact same thing that Isaiah said. It's the same person. I don't know how many times the pedigree has to be read to us. He is who he says he is. Listen, friend, Jesus is either 
who he says he is, or he's a charlatan, as I heard one pastor say. I believe he's the Son of God. I believe he came, he died on that cross, he went in the grave, he was raised from the dead, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And because I believe in him and confess his name, he wrote my name down in the palm of his hand. And he looks at it night and day. And he says, you know what? That's my son. I want you to think about that. Is that you? I think you forgive me. I, I get a little choked up on that. I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. The scars are real. Those nail holes are there. You know, there's a song the Mississippi Mass Choir sings. says, It wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. He could have come down, but the world would have been lost. It was love that held him there. And now he's assuming his role. He's the one that's going to judge this earth. And it starts right here. He came forth and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So he's the only one worthy to re receive it as God holds it out and says, Here, he receives it. God says, Read, go. Okay? Now, when he'd taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Interesting. They're falling down before the throne of God. Their chairs, their thrones surround the throne. Those four creatures are at the four corners of the throne. They're always there shouting, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, worthy to be praised. But yet here they are falling down in front of the Lamb. But, Bob, somebody told me Jesus is not really God's son. I mean, he, he's more he's, he, he's a, a, another person. Uh, group of people who call themselves Christians say that he's Satan's brother. <laughs> Funny. I don't see that anywhere in here. He has no brother. He has no beginning and end. He and the Father are one. Got that? It's that simple. Here he is. And interestingly, listen to this. And he says, I want to go back up a part that I skipped over. He says, he has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out to all the earth. Seven spirits of God, what in the world? We're going to get into that a little more later. Seven horns, what does all of that mean? Well, seven's the number of perfection. Anything to do with God is going to be a seven, all right? Just remember that. But I want you to also remember this. Seven spirits, which are of God, sent out into all the earth. So does that mean there's seven Holy Spirits? Or does that mean that the Holy Spirit has seven different ways it goes out? We're going to let him tell us later. So let's pick this up here in verse 8 where it says, When they fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Mm. Now we know a little bit about something of us here. They have harps. Not you and me. We're not sitting on a cloud playing a harp. They have harps and bowls filled with the prayers of the saints. That's you and me. Crying out, Abba, Father. Protect us. Protect us from our crazy government. Protect us from these people who want to take life away. Protect us from people who want to live contrary to your word. Right? Please save my daughter. Please save my son. Please save my marriage. Please, God, I've put so much work in this business. I gave it to you when I started. Please don't destroy me. Prayers of the saints. 
But these prayers are going up before God at this time. These are the prayers of the persecuted. These are the prayers of the church who's next to the seat of Satan. These are the prayers of the faithful who've been locked up for his name's sake, who've been killed. Family members crying out, why God? Why? These are the prayers. The elders are bringing them to the throne. The elders are representing us here before the throne. Again, God did not create us because he wanted some friends. You think God needs friends? <laughs> he says right here in this chapter, how many people? How many people? None. How many angels? Let me go back and get that number for you here in just a second, okay? But they sang a new song with their harps as they played music and worshipped him. Here's what they said. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Who are they singing to? Let's read the next line. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. There's a major religion in this face of this earth. It's big. They don't have this. They don't believe that. They believe Jesus is just a prophet. Jews think Jesus is a lunatic. There are parts of Christianity, and I hate the way liberal and conservative have been destroyed by politics, but the very liberal Christians, they still think he's baby Jesus, meek and mild, loving and cuddly and bouncing kids on his knee. I got news for you, friend. When we get to those last four chapters of this book, you're going to find out that he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He isn't the lamb. He's the lamb that was slain here. But he's about to take his role as king of kings and lord of lords because he's about to execute judgment. And as these elders say, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you've redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Let me explain it for you this way. I don't care if you're from Kenya, Egypt, Kuwait, Qatar, Afghanistan, Germany, England, the South Pole, Antarctica, Brazil, Kansas, Georgia, Canada, California. I don't care if you're from Japan or China or where you're from. I don't care what tribe you're from. I don't care what color you are. We've been redeemed. If you call on his name, you repent of your sin, you turn your life over to him, and you start trying to walk with him. That's you. That was me when I got saved. You understand? Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 50. <laughs> Wrong. Let me try those numbers again. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. It doesn't say one thing about you and me. It doesn't say a thing about us. There's no harpazo there. We're not standing there. We will be in the presence of the Lamb. But the Lamb is doing something right now. John would have noted us if we were standing there, wouldn't he? Hey, there's Pete. Hey, there's Paul. Hey, there's, there's. 
He doesn't say any of that. He says, one more time, just so you remember. I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying. Okay? So first, he sees these around the throne. And then he hears us. He doesn't say, I saw them. He says, I looked and heard the voice of many angels. I looked. That means your eyes. But then verse 13 says, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying. So when he sees these angels around the throne singing and, and doing this, he also hears us. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. They fell down and worshipped him. Friend, we've got to stop arguing amongst ourselves. What we need to understand is that this event is real. Whether you believe Revelation is coming, whether you believe Revelation has already happened and John was shown it, because there is no time in heaven, he was there in the Spirit, remember? Or whether you believe that all of this has already happened, which is ridiculous, but okay, if that's you, then you just sit there for a few minutes, okay? But for the rest of us, he says, then I looked and I heard the voice, okay? So you want to split hairs with me and say, I looked and I heard. He describes what he sees and who he sees. But in verse 13, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such that are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying. So it's almost like what's in front of him and what's behind him. Now he's been brought up here to watch this in front of him, up in front of him in the throne. He had to come up here. But he could hear us praising. Remember, they're pouring out those prayers. There's a lot going on here. But he doesn't say, I saw humans standing in front of the throne. He doesn't say that. So please don't insert things that aren't there. And don't be like Thomas Jefferson and remove things you don't like. And for those who teach this and write books about it and things like that, Whenever you read someone else's work, including commentaries, Matthew, Henry, I can name four or five, Wearsby, make sure you read them with discernment. Very wise men who wrote very good things. But they're men. And as we get closer to the throne and get closer to the judgment, he said, I'll pour out my spirit. Dream, dream, see visions, prophesy. Those things are going to happen. Young men, old men, sons and daughters. There is no new revelation. It's just the ability to understand what he told us. That's what we're trying to do. So that's chapter 5 in a nutshell. It's very quick. And when we get to chapter 6, it's game on. First seal. First seal. Big one. Big, big, big. Got to be paying attention. Please read ahead if you want to. Now listen, if you have any questions or comments, I'm looking for you to reach out to me. Biblewithbob at gmail.com. Write me. If you want a Bible, write me. If you want to take issue with what I've said, okay. I told you when you and I started studying together, I will gladly sit down and study. I can learn just like you can. I won't be dogmatic because dogma does nothing. But I will not bend on the truth. Christ crucified and resurrected. I will not. That's, we, that's, that's a no-go. I hope and pray that you're growing. 
I am so grateful to get this opportunity to do this with you. I really am. I want to thank you for making this time. Get ready for chapter 6 because it's coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, thank you. Thank you for allowing this time to study. Thank you for teaching us. Oh God in heaven. Oh God in my heart. Lord Jesus Christ, when you were on that cross, you thought of us and paid a price that we can never estimate. But we know that without you, we would never be able to be reconciled to God. So thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>